back back and forth between wireframe and shaded view, and F4 to go back and forth between wireframe shaded and shaded view. So once again, F3 for wireframe, F4 to go back and forth between wireframe and wireframe shaded view. Uh, another way to do it is up here under where it says smooth highlights and edge faces. This is new to 3ds Max 2010. Uh, if you're using 2009, you won't have this option. But you can actually uh, go in and change some of these views up here too. You can go to smooth and highlights, hidden line, wireframe, and flat shaded. Uh, I'm not sure why you would want to use flat shaded unless you just want to really check the silhouette of your object. Uh, I don't tend to use it very often. Um, I basically tend to just stay between smooth highlights turning off edge faces or wireframe shaded and going to wireframe view. Those are the ones that I like the most. Um, but again, I don't tend to use this. For me, just hitting the hotkeys tends to be a little bit faster. Um, one other way of doing shading, um, I'm not sure how to access this other than the hotkey, is to go into x-ray mode. X-ray mode is very useful. Um, if you want to... Hold on. There we go. Um, X-ray mode is very useful if you want to say work from reference. So you have a, a reference image in your scene and you want to model but you still want to be able to see your reference image on the other side of the model. So it's really good to just be able to go back and forth between X-ray and uh, solid shaded mode. So to do that you just hit Alt X and that will toggle you back and forth between X-ray X -ray and shaded mode. Um, so other than that, um, I think that's pretty much all we need to know for navigating between views and different types of shading. So why don't we just move directly on from there. I'm going to go up to the uh, main menu interface up here. And uh, the first one I'm going to look at is this little bluish green or teal Autodesk 3D Studio Max icon. What that basically is, in any other app, that would be your file menu. So when you open up, you have things like File New, uh, you can reset. I wouldn't press that if I were you unless you really mess something up and uh, you know 3D Studio Max is remembering some setting that you didn't want to turn on and is just bugging everything out. Then you hit reset and that will re reset 3D Studio Max to all of the default settings. But the downside to that is you lose all of your customization. So if you customize any hotkeys, anything to your user interface, it'll reset everything. So stay away from that unless it's absolutely necessary. Next you have the open and you can uh, browse to open a file or there's this list to the right here which shows you recent files. So all the recent documents that you've either opened or saved within the last little while, um, you can actually choose those and open them directly. So that's a nice little time saver. Then next you have save and save as. I like save as personally, I almost never just save because what save as does is it allows you to either change the name or if you look over to the right here you have this little plus button. I love that plus button because it automatically appends an iteration of your file. Um, so instead of saving over your file, it saves a new version and appends a number. Right now you can see my file is named intro max or intro max underscore zero. If I hit plus, it's now going to save it as intro to max underscore zero one. And as you can see up here, it says that it'll show you the last file that you saved and that's intro to max 01. So that's very useful because if anything gets corrupted or you lose any work uh, in any way, max crashes, you can always go back um, to an older version of the file before it was messed up rather than saving over your work. So a uh, very useful save as option. Then we have import and export. I won't be looking at those today but that's where you would be able to import either um, different types of 3D file formats, OBJs, meshes exported from other softwares like ZBrush or uh, even Autodesk Maya or some other 3D studio um, or 3D application. You can import meshes from there. You can also merge objects from other 3D Studio Max files without actually opening the file. So that's really useful too because if you want to just import one element from the scene, you can do that using this merge button here. And then export is your standard export. You can export the 3D Studio Max uh, 3D model 
using a various number of different types of file formats and export them to different applications or even to a video game engine. Um, those are the only ones I'm going to look at for now. And actually, under the rest of this, I'm not really going to look at anything else. Um, we have Customize. I'll briefly mention that as well. The only one that I'm going to talk about is Customize User Interface. Under Customize User Interface, this is where you can go in and set up your hotkeys. So you have all the different names here, and then you have the hotkey um, button. So you can either go in here and type in a hotkey, say, which is a very important manipulator function, so I don't want to overwrite that one. But you can basically just look for uh, different keys by typing them in. I is uh, assigned to pan viewport, L is assigned to left view. So you can just kind of look through there and see if anything is unassigned before you try to assign your hotkey. And then you can scroll down here through all of your various different, different operations and choose what function um, you want to assign a hotkey to. So that can be very useful. And then uh, at the bottom here you can just save it. You can also save various different sets of hotkeys and then load them. So you might have hotkeys for modeling and different set of hotkeys for, say, texturing or, or unwrapping, rather, or different hotkeys for animating. So you can save those and say, uh, you know, one hotkey name is animation, another one is set to modeling. You can load those at different times. So once again, very useful. That's under Customize, Customize User Interface. Um, one other thing that's useful under the Customize menu here is preferences. I won't go through everything under the preferences, um, but you can change some things in here. Uh, so it might be good to try to look over those at some point. One that I tend to always check or uh, you know use fairly often if it gets reset is down here under viewports and choose driver. You can choose what your driver is. Uh, I tend to use DirectX, and then you can also configure the driver. And without getting into it too much, um, you'll notice under appearance or background texture size and download texture size, I have it set to the maximum, 1024 and 512. This will become important when you start texturing your models and viewing them in 3D Studio Max. If you have it set on the lower settings, your texture will not display as it actually looks in Photoshop or whatever other um, application you're using or your game engine. So you need to turn it up to the maximum. 1024 and 512, and then say OK. And that will display your textures um, the way they should. So um, we've got a lot to cover, so I'm just going to keep moving on. So now let's look at the main toolbar along the top here. So these are uh, linking tools. I won't look at those too much. Find a space warp, won't look at. Um, this here is a, a selection filter. So you can decide, you know, when you when you click on objects in the scene, if you only want to set select your geometry, you can say just geometry. Say you had like a bunch of lights or cameras or other things in your scene, and they're getting in the way, and you don't want to select those, then you can just choose geometry. Likewise, you can choose only lights or cameras or whatnot, phones if you're doing animation. So that can be kind of useful. We also have over here select by name, so um, I'm just going to add another object in the scene just to illustrate my point. I'll add a cylinder. Um, so under select by name, now I have box one and cylinder one. So say you had a lot of objects in your scene and you knew the name of the specific object that you wanted to select. You could just select it by name here. And once again, you have filters along the top here. So if you only want to show geometry um, or only want to show lights, you can do that along the top here as well. So also pretty useful uh, in terms of selecting things quickly and efficiently. Next we have our marquee tool. This is also very useful. Um, you can use this to select numerous objects at once or only select one object. Um, so that's very useful. And uh, while we're on the topic of selection, I'll mention uh, how to select multiple things by clicking on them and deselect as well. So if you click on one object and then click on another object, it will deselect the object that you are clicking on and select the one that you tried to select afterwards or tried to click on afterwards. If you want to click on objects and select multiple objects, just hold down control. 
and then by holding control and clicking on the object again, it will deselect it. So that's how to select multiple objects. Um, or again, you can just use the marquee tool. And then you have different shapes of marquees. You have your circle marquee, so if you had rounder objects, that might be more useful. And then you actually have your polygonal marquee, um, where you can actually draw the shape of your marquee. You can drag it out and sort of just draw around what you want to select. So that's kind of kind of neat and useful. I don't really use it very often though. Um, and they actually have this new sort of spray paint marquee where you can actually just click and hold and drag your cursor around the screen. And as long as you don't let go, anything that you pass your cursor over top of will become selected. So that's kind of neat. A little gimmicky, but you know, I could see the use for it. Um, most of the time though, I just leave it on the rectangle marquee. So after that, the next thing I'm going to look at is the manipulator tools. These are very useful. Um, in fact, you will use them every single time you open the application. So the manipulator tools are basically translate, which allows you to move your object in the scene, 